one day I had, I had headed off to the airport and I, I had pretty much gotten all my stuff, you know, loaded in the airplane, everything ready, uh, ready to go. And my cell phone rang. Uh, this was actually the second time in the day that my phone had gone off. And uh, they, it was a phone patch uh, from Kaikan Village. They had informed me that there was a, a, a medevac out of uh, Philippi. An eight-year-old girl had gotten a snake bite and uh, was not doing well. And it just so happened that uh, I was planning to go into Parima uh, to pick up my wife, who's, uh, of course, a nurse practitioner. And so, you know, w when we go in to the when we go into the interior, we're always gross weight. We we never leave empty. And so I was full of of supplies for the school. And so I couldn't go directly to, to Philippi Village. So what I did was I went, I dropped off my stuff, I picked up my wife and, and daughter, and we flew over and got the medevac. And on the way back out to Georgetown, uh, my wife was, was treating her all along the way. And uh, if you've ever tried to uh, do charcoal treatments in a Cessna 172, it's, it's a little bit challenging, especially when you have all the fresh air vents on, you know, and, and it's blowing and you open up the charcoal and woof, you know, the, the charcoal goes everywhere and, uh, you know, it's, those are memories, those are experiences and I wouldn't trade it for anything, you know, and that's, that's what we're about, you know, that's, that's what we love doing is we love serving people and, uh, you know, it's those, those experiences, you know, where, where you're cramped in an airplane and, and you know, you're trying to, you know, do these, these bandage charcoal treatments, you know, trying to save a life. And, I mean, you know, you're carrying the girl in your arms, you know, through the air, airplane hangar. She's crying because she's just in a lot of pain and, and stuff because, uh, because of the snake bite. It, it's just, those, those are the moments that, that you look back on and you remember and you say, you know what, um, this is what it's about. We want to learn about what it is to live by faith. You know, um, I, I really believe with all my heart that, that difficult times are coming. And uh, we don't have to say they're coming. They, I mean, they're already here. And if we're going to be living by faith in the future, we need to learn faith now. It's challenging because on one, on one hand, uh, you know, your emotions play with you. Well, how am I going to make it? How am I going to do this? You know, where's the money going to come from? And, and you go to the Lord in prayer and you say, Lord, we need this money. We need this. And, you know, and, and we have to pay these Bible workers and, and the airplane has to go through maintenance and we have to replace these parts. And I mean, all these things can stack up and be overwhelming. And, and, and you go to the Lord in prayer and you say, Lord, you got help, <laughs> you know, but then, but then God, you know, over a period of time, you know, you start to look back and you say, how did we do that? How did that happen? We were lying in bed one night and my wife says, you know, honey, what would, what would happen if we were to move out of Georgetown, we were to move out into a village and to uh, work out in the jungle or, or out in one of these villages? Would, and uh, I was so shocked, I, I said, I, I can't believe you just said that. And uh, so we talked about it till 1130 uh, at night, and we were talking about possibilities. And about a month and a half later, uh, one of our Bible workers received uh, a, an offer from one of the villages. Uh, they said, we don't have a health worker. We need a health worker. Um, can you find us one? Can your organization find us one? Uh, when we heard that, we started to get excited because uh, we realized, you know, that God was doing something. And uh, we started asking questions, you know, do they have an airstrip? Yes, they have an airstrip. Um, what about housing? Th they're willing to provide housing, you know. Uh, she can do, you know, be the primary health care worker for a village, uh, Shia village. Uh, a village of 400 in individuals. Uh, they're wanting us there. Uh, there is no church. Uh, just all these things just have been coming together. So we've been, we've been praying about this and earnestly, you know, seeking uh, God's direction in this. I feel that here in Guyana, 
my wife and I are learning what it means to live by faith. It doesn't mean we're perfect. We're not perfect. You know, we make mistakes. We, we you know, we have our struggles and, and stuff like that. But God is in the process of preparing us for something better. And, you know, as we, as we head down to Shia, uh, it may be that this is where God wants us to be. This is what God's ultimate purpose is. But it could be that Shia is just another stepping stone to something else. I don't know. Uh, but God, God, is, God is ha has us, you know, in the process, and he's, he's shaping us. And this is why I like being in Guyana, living, you know, as some people would say, in a faith ministry, because um, faith is, you know, that faith is what ultimately what matters most. Yeah, this is my wife, wife Joy, and Jenna. The next generation of mission pilot. <laughs> next generation. <laughs> she enjoys flying. Oh, she does. She. And uh, it's good because you know she. If she's tired, you just put her in the airplane, and instantly she falls asleep. Great pilot. Yeah. <laughs>